Hey everybody, <clears throat> how are you all doing today? So, Nazbul Gang is going to be on in a little bit. He's just uh, finishing up dinner. So I figured I'd come on and just say hi to everybody. And we'll talk a bit about the Canadian election. Because uh, we're heading into a federal election this year. Um, just messaging him. Uh, we were originally going to have it, and then I forgot to change the time. So I didn't think it was fair to just put it off, etc. So here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. Uh, let me see here. Next Canadian election. So I hope everybody's been having a good weekend. Um, I've been having an okay one. Up in up in uh, southern Ontario, the average, uh, I think the temperature today is like negative. Let me just look it up. It's it's like negative 35 with, with wind chill today. It's something like that. Okay, it's negative... 18 with wind chill negative 35 that's how uh that's how cold it is so take that for what it's worth anyway so nasbol gang will be on when he's on um let's talk a bit about the upcoming canadian election because it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting one the big question is whether or not the Conservatives can take down Justin Trudeau. Uh, Justin Trudeau has kind of been an unstoppable political force of pause. He's widely disliked among a lot. He's kind of, um, he's a very polarizing figure. He's kind of like our Obama. Um, Sorry, I was just mess messaging Nazbol. Um, Celsius. So he's kind of been like our Obama. Um, a lot of the people who like him like him. The people who hate him hate him. He's a very divisive figure in Canada. The media absolutely likes him. But what kind of happened with Justin Trudeau is he tried to play big brain centrist on a couple issues. And he kind of ran as the single most radical politician I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, single most radical just on social liberal issues, on identity issues, on uh, sovereignty issues, etc. He's just like an extreme globalist, just complete radical social liberal. And... Because he, he ran on this this radical platform. You see, what had happened in the 2015 election... What had happened in the 2015 election... Uh, sorry, the 2011 election... Was... Michael Ignatieff had kind of run on a big brain centrist platform. So the left-wing vote almost entirely coalesced around Jack Layden. And the NDP actually became the official opposition for a while. But then when Justin Trudeau came in and Thomas Mulcair tried to be the big brained uh, centrist, the entire left wing vote swung back towards the liberals. And yeah, the entire uh, left wing vote swung back towards the liberals and they won a huge majority. So the question is, what's going to happen this time? Part of the issue is Jagmeet Singh is, is is a fucking political lightweight. He has no idea what the hell he's doing. It was just a complete and utter disaster, uh, his campaign. Uh, the polls that he's been having are just fucking horrendous. Let's see what polls we have recently. So we have, in general, it's looking like the Liberals. There's a couple that have it varied. Um, the Liberals seem to be ahead, but not by a ton. Keep in mind, the margin of error on these is plus minus 3%. So what that means is the Liberals are between 35 and 42, and the Conservatives are between 31 and 36. So they are fairly close to the margin of error. Uh, between one another 
So th there is that, and that's fairly close. The, the big question, though, is will the People's Party of Canada have much of an impact? Because what wound up happening... Sorry, I'm just drinking my Perrier. Take a sip. Uh, what wound up happening is Bernier got into a big fight with the uh, Conservative Party leadership because he was somewhat more based on like uh, multiculturalism and immigration. He wanted to kind of have a conversation about it, and he got kicked out of the Conservative Party because of it. So he started his own party, and it's called the People's Party of Canada. And the question is, is he going to be able to pull off any of the right wing vote? Because traditionally the conservatives win in Canada because the left wing vote is split between at least three parties, the NDP, the Liberals and the Green Party of Canada. But and, and just the right or center right vote. And I use that term very loosely vote for the conservatives. And so they're able to win because we have a single member uh, plurality system. But and I'm kind of getting off topic here, what I was saying about Justin Trudeau. But Justin Trudeau ran, like I said, as a political radical, but he's done a lot of kind of like theoretically centrist things uh, heading into this election. Like he said, we're going to have massive democratic reform. We're going to have crazy. We're going to have um, we're going to get rid of first past the post. We're going to go to. I don't know, some weird stuff, some weird new thing uh we're gonna we're gonna head over to the american um american's gonna start in like 20 minutes i'm just waiting for a nazbull gang but um yeah so he he backed off on that he nationalized the pipeline because we had this whole pipeline thing uh the keystone xl so basically and this, this whole thing is just fucking like shit show um, the government of Alberta and BC had signed a deal a while ago to build an oil pipeline that would bring oil to British Columbia, where it would be sold overseas and shipped around the world, primarily to China. So this was all legally done. Um, th this, this was all legally finished. Uh, the, the government had approved of both provinces, the federal government approved we had an election in British Columbia that brought an NDP Green Party coalition government to power, and they tore up the agreement. Now, it wasn't legal to tear up this agreement because it had already been approved. And then, like, some federal court overturned it on the grounds that the natives hadn't been adequately consulted. So Alberta's furious. You actually had a bit of a trade war there for a while where they were trying to put tariffs on each other's. Uh, wine and beer products. And Justin Trudeau tried to get out of it. So they nationalized the Keystone XL pipeline. Oh, no, Kinder Morgan. Sorry, is it Kinder Morgan? I'm getting them mixed up. I, I don't know. I think it's Kinder Morgan. Sorry, I, I get them. They're, they're two basically the same thing. But so he nationalized it and it's a crown corporation now. So. Uh, the thing is, Kinder Morgan is pulled out of Canada. They said we're never going to invest money in Canada again. Uh, this is it. Uh, we just don't want to deal with this tomfoolery. And and honestly, I, I can't really blame them for that. I wouldn't want to invest in Canada either uh, if I had to put up with this nonsense. So that's just kind of how things are going at the moment. Um, but Trudeau's base was really pissed off about that because, I don't know, he didn't just ban the oil and gas sector outright like they wanted him to shut down the pipeline and he didn't he kind of sort of supported it the issue is by kind of sort of supporting it he didn't make like prairie voters happy and he didn't make uh he didn't make the other voters happy so everyone's pretty much pissed off at him uh, Jason Kenney said that separatism is starting to become a thing again in Alberta. So we're heading into the election with the Liberals and Conservatives, fairly similar amounts. If there was a strong NDP, the Conservatives could probably take this election. At the moment, they probably aren't going to. They're going to do a lot 
better though than they did last time because last time was a disaster it was the definition of a low energy campaign it was like the lowest energy campaign i've ever seen they basically were just like on suicide watch the whole time they put in virtually no effort to trying to win it it was just a massacre like they just kind of went into it thinking that they were going to lose and they could have done a lot better than they did so this was the results of the last election as you can see it was pretty much a liberal sweep across the country uh the conservatives only managed to hold on to their two um kind of core provinces however things are going to be kind of different this time some of the polls I've seen have the Conservatives and Liberals tied in Ontario, so they can probably pick up some seats there, and that'll be a, a big boon to them. Um, they'll probably get at least some seats in Atlantic Canada, even if it's one or two per province, every little bit helps. They'll probably get the rest of them in uh, Alberta. I think the Liberals are actually very close to the Conservatives in BC. So... And Manitoba will probably swing blue again because of the whole oil thing. So it's it's I think it's going to be a lot closer than than what we think. Um, something important to keep in mind is Ontario and BC are exactly half of Canada's population. So if those swing even a little bit in their direction, then I don't know the the Tories might have a bit of a chance. Keep in mind I don't really like the Federal Conservative Party. But if I have to pick between them and Justin Trudeau, I'll take that. Uh, I, I will take that in a heartbeat over Justin Trudeau here. And besides that, uh, I do like it. Andrew Shear is a, is a really cute family. Let me just do some Shear posting here for a minute. Okay, I want to do some Shear posting. There we go. There's Andrew Shear's family. I don't know. I think his kids are really cute. Um, let's see here. Anyways. Wholesome Aryan family. Yeah, Andrew Shear's family are German Catholics. My understanding is he's actually fairly religious. Um, he said, and, and this is kind of the position that pro-life people have to take in Canada. He said, I'm pro-life, but realistically, there's nothing we can do about it at the moment, at least. And I mean, that's perfectly fair. That's kind of my position, too. I don't know. I think he has a cute family. I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Justin Trudeau at least uh, has children, but... Uh, Which is more than I can say for a lot of uh, them. Someone asked, does CAQ run in national election or just conservatives? Maybe they can get this, the Quebec seats with CAQ's popularity. Now, Quebec is just weird. I, I think before we even talk about Quebec, you have to understand Quebec is just fundamentally a different beast than the rest of the country. They normally have their own political parties. They have really weird like swings, etc., at the moment, Quebec has a couple different parties running nationally. I think one's like Opinion Nationale. There's the, uh, generally speaking, the Liberals win in Quebec. The Conservatives might win a couple seats around, uh, around Montreal. See, what happened is the Bloc A Quebecois was largely formed from defecting conservative MPs, not so much liberal MPs. So despite the bloc being a, uh, despite the, the Quebec being, sorry, despite blah, 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 the bloc a Quebecois being a um, social democratic party, they're mostly made up of former conservatives. And to a certain extent, the liberal party of Quebec is also made up of former conservatives it's really weird in quebec basically kind of in quebec the political spectrum is sovereigntist versus 
uh, sovereignists versus federalist. It's not so much a divide between uh, left and right as we would understand it, because all political parties in Quebec are socially liberal, and all of them are kind of um, right winged. Uh, sorry, uh, economically left winged. Why are they saying social conservatism for the CAQ? I've never got that impression from them. Maybe that's like just me not knowing about it, but that's really strange. Let's see here. Uh, okay, so they do call it a... Uh, okay. The Conservative Party. Okay, so they are. Uh, so like the CAQ is... They might be the most right-wing party, at least in terms of national identity in uh, Canada. They campaigned on, like, uh, cultural nationalism, reducing immigration to Quebec, etc. Yeah, so Quebec has, like, a bunch. You have the CAQ, you have the Liberal Party, who's the main Federalist Party. You have the Parti Québécois. The, the interesting thing about the Parti Québécois is it has a very wide historical range of support. Because, like, some of the people who supported it were um, th there were people who were, like, conservative rural dwellers and, like, liberal urbanites. Uh, it, it had a very wide range of uh, supporters throughout its history. It's, it's an interesting... Quebec is like you could probably spend a lifetime studying politics in Quebec and not really getting it. Quebec was like historically the most right wing province in Canada and then it became the most left wing one. And now it's this kind of like dildo based civic nationalist state where it's like Anglos out, Haitians in civic, which is, is kind of what it's like at the moment. Oh, um, Nazbul, I'm doing this as a live, as a, just a stream. So if you just come into my discord, uh, let me just put it up. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just going to make a, a, uh, thing there. Why is this not showing up properly? Edit channel, I want to limit it to two people. Okay, here we go. I'm sending you the link on uh, Facebook. There you go. Uh, so yeah, just sorry about that. That was just uh, come into that on uh, my Discord, and we'll we'll talk there. Okay, hello, my good man. Hello. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, he'll be on in a second. As an American, I apologize for his lateness. No, that's fine. Um, he was actually going to come on, and I just forgot to reschedule stuff. So. Um. It is entirely my bad. So, yeah, that's kind of what is heading into the, the federal election in... Canada. It's it's kind of a massive um, clusterfuck. We'll see though. Maybe maybe things will turn out okay. I mean, okay as things can be. It's kind of a uh, disaster. Oh, okay. How much time will you devote to American election versus Canadian? 
uh, pretty much entirely to the American election. The Canadian election doesn't really interest me because it's just, it's just, it's just not interest. It's just terrible. So let me just open some stuff for the uh, Canadian, um, uh, the American election. Okay, let's see. Republican presidential primaries. I wonder if Trump will get a primary challenger. I, I doubt it, but it would be interesting if he did. That could be like a wild card. Let me see. Where is the electoral map? I'm trying to see where the uh, the electoral map is. I'm sure there's one somewhere. Let me just come up with it. I'm just trying to find where's that like map that you can hello oh hey man okay i was really confused for you to do oh no sorry about that i just but it's okay pal. <clears throat> so sorry uh no it's not your fault it's my fault for forgetting to change the scheduled time here i have to go get something again sorry okay no problem man Okay, what's the whole Alberta independence thing? Um, it's not a huge thing. It's just that people are very angry about the whole, uh, um, the the whole pipeline cancellation thing. A lot of people are just very pissed off about that. So that's just kind of the issue at the moment. So okay. So what is your hot take on the, um, well, I, I guess we'll just talk about it. Uh, what is your hot take on the uh, 2020 election? Well, I think it's going to be a woman Democrat versus Trump. Right. You were talking about earlier, I think Trump will get a primary challenger. Do you think he will? Yes, I think it'll be somebody like Romney or Kasich. Some kind of um, person who will make their life's work out of Curtis Trump. And they won't even do it to win. They'll just do it to, like, criticize Trump. To try to crash the campaign? Yep. Okay, so Jeff Flake has expressed interest. Wasn't he, like, the ultimate rhino? Yeah. He's a pretty worthless guy. Let's see. Bill Crystal. Is, is he fucking, like, serious? I hope have... so. Look at all those people. They're all, like, never Trumpers. Uh, maybe McMuffin will run again. Did he ever die of AIDS? McMuffin? Yeah. Did he have AIDS? Well, look at his face. I've never seen gay face so hard before. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, John Kasich will probably run again. But but does anyone like have a realistic chance of overthrowing Trump? Like of getting? Okay, looking at this, it doesn't look like so far. I don't think there's really there's a really a realistic chance of removing him. The best they can do is like just try to screw it up for him and make it so that he like loses the general election as part of a temper tantrum. Yeah, that's what I think they'll try to do. I don't think it'll go very far. 
Okay, so the interesting one, though, is the Democratic primary. As I was saying to you earlier, all they really have to do is just run a boring white guy. <clears throat> like, run Joe Biden. But just they to... can't. No, they can't. No, but if they were to run... They, like... He can't win the primaries. That's what's so interesting about it. Because if they were to run, like, the most boring white guy possible, he would win in a landslide, wouldn't he? I don't think a landslide. He would probably win, though, right? Like, Derek Taylor said that they should run Castro. Really? Julian Castro. Derek Taylor thinks that they'll, that's who they should run if he wanted to win. If he was... Look at how many... Look at all... Go down to the the big deal candidates there. The big deal candidates that haven't technically entered the race. Warren and Kamala Harris. I think Warren actually ha probably has a decent chance of winning. I don't think Warren can win the primary. I think she sabotaged herself pretty bad. By doing what? Revealing that every white American is more Indian than she is. I don't know. I'm sure the media will just cover it up. If she sticks in, she'll win New Hampshire for sure. I wonder with regards to um, to Warren, I think she'd lose to Trump in a general election. I'm, I don't know. It just has to do with how unfavorable somebody is. I guess she's somewhat unfavorable, isn't she? I just don't think people would like her much. Okay, so let's see who other declared candidates. I don't know. I, I think we all know Andrew Yang is going to win. Well, I support him, obviously. Out of out of the people who are running, probably. Who the fuck is this asshole? Who? Ken Nwadike Jr. Is he... Who, what is he? Oh, maybe just watch the stream, or have it up while you're just because i have i'm screen sharing i'm trying to but there's a lag oh okay he's he's the guy that says free hug mm -hmm. the free hutch what the fuck is that shit <laughs> i don't know it's free hugs video nigga you're gay nigga's gay yeah, so, okay, let's see here. Harry Braun. Who the hell is Harry Braun? He looks, that guy looks fucking creepy. So, the scheduled campaign announcements meaning means they're going to announce at some point in the near like. I think they keep kicking them back, though. I've been checking them every few days, and they keep getting pushed back. Okay, I've had all these people say that Tulsi Gabbard is based. Like, what is that about, or? I don't know. I think she's anti-neocon. Yeah, I think she is, and she's anti-trans-Pacific um, partnership. Oh, okay, yeah, she was against... She's also a practicing Hindu, isn't she? Yeah. The first Hindu member of uh, the United States Congress. Cool. She's also divorced. Of course she is. But... And she is a G.I. Jane. Oh, she was in the army? Oh, okay. She's on her second husband. No children. Of course not. Let's see here. Kamala Harris? Who the hell's she? You haven't heard of Kamala Harris? No. Oh, Kamala Harris is who everybody thinks is going to win. How Kamala Harris. She? Uh, she's black. She's a black Hillary Clinton. Oh. That she's Hillary Clinton, but a black woman. That's how I define her. So, someone who's, like, competent and is just willing to do anything to win? 
No, I mean her position. Right. She's really not toes are not that progressive. Oh, okay. By comparison to like um Warren or Sam are so called progressive. Right. Another moment of silence. Whatever happened to the... Who is that fucking soy boy who they had in uh, Florida? Who was like... Something hog? I don't know who you talk, what you're talking about. That guy who was like the head of the anti-gun movement? The just... teenager? David Hogg? David Hogg, yes. Whatever happened to him? He's going to Harvard. Oh, he is? He got into Harvard. It was like black uh, affirmative actions couldn't get us into Harvard with his. They just gave him. Harvard accepted him because of the political stuff. Of course they did. Let's see. Wow, a Republican managed to get 43%. Oh, no, that's Attorney General. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. And, in, in, um, yeah, I forgot in uh, California elections, uh, because it's the it's the top two, that the Democrats... Yeah, it's a jungle primary now. Yeah, they just have two Democrats running. Yeah. People are asking in the chat, do you think Alexandria Cortez will run in the future? I feel like, <clears throat> judging by the way that she acts, I feel like she's going to explode in a fireball. What do you mean? She doesn't seem that stable to me. Yeah, but that doesn't really matter, per se. Well, do you think she'll attempt, are you asking me if I think she'll attempt to run? Yeah. Perhaps. I don't, I don't know. I don't have no crystal ball. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. So if you had to guess now, who do you think would win? So you, do you think Julian Castro doesn't have a chance because he's not a woman? I think that the thing you have to remember with Trump is that the media is running false rape accusations really, really hard. And if you look at the 2018 primary election, oh, um, not primary the, election, midterm election. Oh, no, wait, that's my bad. Let me just turn that down. Um, women just wreck that. It's like uh, single women are just dominating electorally right now. Because they bother to vote? Mm hmm Whoever single women are going to vote for in the primary, because... At such a small scale is how much, like, how much total they make of a population, how much does that matter in a general election? Well, if it's mattering a lot, then within the Democratic primaries themselves, it'll matter a great deal. The question is if they run, like, some, like, crazy radical woman, if, if that'll give Trump a chance to win. Because that's like one of the few ways I, I could see him winning is if they just... So you think he's going to lose no matter what? No, I just, I think it's going to be a very rough slog. So that was going to get to the... Can you pull up, can you pull up 20 or 270 to win? Yeah, I was, I actually had it open. Okay, so if, if, are there any toss-up states I missed? Oops, no. If you just have the same map and you just make Florida blue, what happens? Um, you mean from last time? Let's see here. He can still win if Florida turns blue, it looks like. Okay, oh, okay, here we go. This is what they have at the moment. Um, let's see here. Cook political war. Bro. 
Um, it would almost be, it would be extremely difficult. Okay, so let's look at the toss-up states. Let me just switch this to competitive, and we'll go through these. Uh, let's see, where is it? Reset map. Okay, so I think we can give Texas to the Republicans. I don't think Beto. I don't think Beto O'Rourke can make it through the primaries because he's a man. But at the same time, I think Beto O'Rourke would decimate Trump, just decimate him. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the. Uh, let me just turn all the toss-ups into. Why is Georgia a toss-up? I never get that. Because of Atlanta. There's Atlanta is one of the largest metropolitan centers in the United States. And it's extreme. Like, Georgia's like 52% white now because of it. Not not even 56%? No. Georgia's going to... Georgia is pretty much gone. Okay, so let's see. I have the toss-up state map, so let's just go through this. Uh, so what are you going to say for Texas? Texas? Only Republican unless Rourke. Then if it's Rourke, then top. Um, I don't think it's going to go blue in this election, so I'm just going to give that to them as a solid Republican. I no, I give it to them as a pink. Okay. Arizona pink uh nevada is should that be dark blue or light blue light I blue i can't really see the republicans winning in nevada um <clears throat> it depends on how the wall goes if the wall goes through you think it's better yeah in colorado is probably actually a hard blue now yeah, Colorado's hard blue now. Yep, I'd agree. Uh, I'm going to give Florida to the Republicans because they won. Didn't they win the Senate? I'm going to say your absolute toss-up, maybe even light blue. Because Do you know about the the how felons can vote now? Oh, they can now? Yeah, during the election, felons are able to vote now in Florida. So that means a million people are now registered to vote again who are felons. So that's why Democrat everybody says Democrat. win anymore, because um, felons, I think, voted like 90 percent tile for Democrats. Yeah. Also, there's like lots and lots of Puerto Ricans that have settled there after the hurricane hit there or the. OK, I'm going to put it to just toss up because you never can tell with Florida. Uh, I'm going to give. It... Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to give Georgia to the uh, Republicans. I put it lean pink. Uh, North Carolina? Lean pink. Isn't Virginia a dark blue state at this point? Yeah. Okay, let's get to the interesting ones. Pennsylvania. Um, lean red. You would say lean red? Yeah, I would go throughout the rust belt and put things either lean red or toss i would put i would put minnesota as a toss-up and uh, i would turn oregon light blue really why have they yeah. been losing uh support no it was actually pretty close in 2016 interesting um i'd actually i can't really see ohio flipping well eastern, eastern oregon is like uh, Eastern Oregon and Washington, you have to remember, is like Idaho. It's just the coastal cities. Right. Um, I don't know. I can't see Ohio flipping. Yeah, I would... I'm just saying from what I think will happen. But, I mean, New Hampshire and... Uh, I mean, Trump gained a lot in the north, like Northeast. It's actually really weird. What do you think for New Hampshire? <laughs> toss up, toss up, toss up. and main main um the Senate seats toss up toss. Up. Okay. 
Uh, what about or main? Main maybe. Yeah, toss up, toss up. What because about, we'll probably uh, gain in Maine. What do you think about Wisconsin and M- Michigan? Toss up, toss up for both of them. them. Okay, yeah. so so it is going to be very close. Just, yeah, it depends on what happens on the campaign trail. Because I don't know, I could see like some radical feminist alienating like the white states of like uh, Wisconsin and. Isn't Wisconsin fairly white? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Um, There's like uh, black enclaves there, but I could see it alienating people just in, in that the area, the Great Lakes states, if they they run someone really right. Actually, like I'm, I don't think so. I think it's the opposite. Really? I think that uh, I think that if you have a a woman there. That those are going to be more toss up and lean towards. Uh, what about I? Because I'm my gut feeling is is that um, women is that women are extreme like not every woman but there's these you know the people that wear pink hats they are like turning into Al Qaeda basically. Right, just in terms of how like radical they are uh yeah not radicals and radical proposals but radical as in like conspiracy theories i mean they all believe trump is like a, a rapist that's raped like dozens of women and gotten away with it just because he's rich yeah like how um they claimed he raped like like prepubescent teenage girls and stuff like that yep what yeah. I mean, that doesn't even I make sense. Like Trump only dates like busty women, so like it's not even a good lie. Well, they believe that Trump got peed on. They believe that Russia directly hacked election machines, dude. Okay, so let's look at the close states. Oh, New Hampshire was wow. Okay, I didn't realize New Hampshire was that close. New so Hampshire and New Hampshire within ten thousand, I both I think. Uh, less than 10,000. Yeah, I went within 10,000. Gary Johnson fucking ruined it. Like, he ruins everything. Um, I don't know if he, who he stole more from, to be honest. Because Nevada and... Nevada was... Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, further down is a table for close... Oh, okay, here we go, close races. Okay, so New Hampshire was 0.4%. Okay, so it's possible Trump can. I don't think New Hampshire's changed that much demographically. I think Trump is actually, like, it's probably easier. Like, Trump could win New Hampshire. Okay, because... Like, like, I actually think Trump could win um, some of these Northeast states, to be honest. What about... Oh, Maine was not that... Maine was... I think he can win Maine the Senate seat. Because Maine is split. There's a seat for the house, for each house, and then whoever wins the majority of state gets the Senate seats, because it's four. Right. Okay, so, yeah, I'd say he could win Maine. Um, Florida wasn't that close. I I still think Florida has some. There's Puerto Ricans there, and a million felons have been enfranchised. I don't know. I, I think he had. I think there is a path to victory. I just think it's going to be very hard. I think it's it's very difficult because uh, because yeah, because Pennsylvania. I think the Republicans could probably win. Wisconsin, they could probably win. Michigan, they could probably win. New Hampshire. I don't know. It's 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 down to a very just close. I, I guess kind of the question is. When will the first major Republican state just crack? Like, to me, I think it's... Florida and Georgia. Probably Georgia. If Florida doesn't this time, then Georgia will crack this time. Mm -hmm. Georgia, before the whole felons and Puerto Ricans coming in, Georgia was the closest, I believe. Right. 
Yeah, that was very... It was close. I, I don't know. Like I said, I think it's going to be just razor thin margins for a lot of these states. Well, it depends on who he's running against. Yeah, like... Because... I think it's going to be I mean, closer than maybe the last election, even. Well, you're going to see... You're going to see, like... I mean, it's like, a, like the media has been going nonstop insanity for how long? What? For his entire presidency? Two years before his presidency, maybe? Mm hmm So, like, they've never stopped it's just i don't know how much people trust the media but what scares me is just the people that do trust it they have they're gone they're just they're not even like human beings they're anymore. npcs yes let's see utah i think you didn't how much did mcmuffin get in utah Holy um, fuck, McMuffin got 22% in Utah? Yeah. Well, he was just... <clears throat> the whole reason he did it is to steal Utah. You've said that he's part of the deep state, right? No, he was part of the CIA, dude. Yeah. He obviously is. <laughs> McMuffin. Let me see, how close was Utah? Oh, it still wasn't close, even with that. Then again, maybe... One if... wonders how much of Hillary's votes he ended up stealing. He could have stolen more of her votes than... Etc. <laughs> how many... Let me see what states McMuffin got the most votes in. I don't think he ran in any other states really did he he just ran in in um mormon states oh he got a couple votes in kansas maine let me see what did he do in uh i uh he I got a thousand votes in new hampshire woke that's base <laughs> um Do you think Hillary's going to try to run again? Uh, yeah. The question is, will because, she die? Oh, can I explain what I think is going to happen? By all means. In the primaries? Mm -hmm. I think he's going to go to a contested convention. Who because Trump? I think that there's going to be too many people running against Trump. There's going to be too many Democrats running, so the Democratic primaries is going to go to the contested convention. And the super delegates. It's going country. to be really disastrous for them. Could we see like what was the big Democratic convention? Was it in the 60s? 68. Do you think we could ever return to that? Like where it's a divided convention and then like the. Uh... No, I think that's going to happen. That's actually what I think is going to happen. Do you think like the SJWs and stuff will like storm it and like start riots and shit? Yeah. Interesting. It's it's one of the things I find funny is how much more money Hillary raised than Trump. <laughs> Wasn't it like twice as much, or it's like, like three times as much? Two hundred and ten percent. Oh, or it depends. You know on that, oh, you know that the raising money doesn't have to do with winning, right? Or the raising money is people had bets for favors after they win. Most of the people thought Hillary would. Right. I mean, to a certain, like, to a certain extent. I mean, obviously they buy ads with that money, but the money they pay for the ads with doesn't really influence the election that much. What it does is it's <clears throat> basically, like, it's just to win favor after the election. Oh, I found a party for you. Party for Socialism and Liberation. Isn't that a... Is that the Communist Party in California? Yeah, I think it is. Then there's the LARPers in the Constitution Party. 
You know, you should look up the Democratic Socialist of America. Because they're basically like a Tea Party within the uh, within the the uh, Democrats right now. And what's interesting about it is is that Canada has three parties, right? Right. So if they broke off, then it, they're uh, the American system would be like the Canadian and the Mexican system. It's kind of interesting. Right. Oh, they're how big are they? Uh, they gained 50,000 members in one year from nothing. Uh, okay, so and of 28... Cortez and that one Palestinian are members. Um, I, I like how she was attacking the, uh, Israeli ones. And calling them divided loyalties. The Palestinian? Yeah, she was calling the Israel, the Jewish senators having uh, divided loyalties, which is hilarious. Well, whose loyalties does Chuck Schumer lie with? Um, it's a good question. Okay, so their official ideology is is eco socialism, dildoism, of socialist feminism, anti imperialism, anti racism anti-capitalism they aren't anti-capitalism though no modern left is anti cap they're like oh my god look at this guy it's the biggest fucking soy boy i've ever oh, seen. oh the redhead yeah 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 i mean it's intimidating how much of a soy he is he looks like like a left-wing version of ethan ralph let's see here. remember the guy <clears throat> that do you remember copper cap or whatever yeah is that copper cap? Maybe. For real though? Look at these fucking losers. Wow. Democratic Socialists of America. Do you like them more than you like the normal Democratic Party? Um, yeah, because they're less neocon. Because the neocons have abandoned the Democratic Party. I mean, are the Republican Party. It's really weird. If you go look, there's that guy that's running with his military uniform as his campaign image. And there's all kinds of people in the 2018 election, which are former CIA assets and G.I. James and stuff on the Democratic side. Right, because Trump kicked out most of the neocons. Yeah. I mean, think about how many interventions Obama did. Syria, Yemen, um, Libya, Tunisia. I think they got involved in like Mauritania or Mali, um, Iraq, Afghanistan. I think there were some others. All the drone strikes. I think Bernie would win, like would beat Trump pretty easily. I don't know if Bernie can beat a, like, base black. No, that's the issue. I think he'd win, though, because white people like him more than... Yeah, I think whoever... I think any white person that made it through, like Warren, Bernie, and then Beto O'Rourke, and um, Biden, if they made it through, they would beat Trump, but they can't make it through the primary. No, like I said, they just need to run a boring white guy. And then they'd win. <laughs> uh, and, and that's about it. Someone's asking uh, about the March for Life. I admit I'm too much of a pussy to go to it in Canada. I'm sick today, so I couldn't go. Because if I, if I went in Canada, then I got photographed. I'd never be able to work again. So... Or is it that bad? Yeah, it is. People get arrested. If you did it in Calgary, is it that bad? Uh, it's not as bad there, but, like, people get arrested, like, for protesting abortion. Um, the, the police will make up, like, some reason to, um, arrest them. It's, it's really, like, bad here. Uh, inclusive capitalism. What the fuck is inclusive capitalism? It's literally the worst thing you can imagine. 
It's literally we abandon socialism and we're super capitalist. Do you know what's you know what, Argent? What? Guess what's the most trusted institution of leftist in the United States? Banks. Amazon. Right. What's the least trusted? Uh the military. Executive What, sorry? Okay, let's executive branch Trump right. presidency. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the most, for Republicans, what's the most trusted? The military? Military. What's the least trusted? Facebook? Uh, the media in general. Right. <laughs> Don't you think that that's uh, very telling that they trust Amazon? Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? There's this, uh, okay, so our, our mutual friend who lives in Ottawa, there is like a pride parade and there was some like 80 year old based Catholic guy who was protesting it. And Pensioners need to rule the world when they're like that. And he's like, oh, this degeneracy shouldn't stand. And I'm like, if only like they, they killed him and then we could make him a saint. <laughs> Forgetting about Okay, money. so. You want to hear all the things Obama was in that didn't... Con so, continuing from from Bush, he was in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan, and a little bit in Somalia. He extended Somalia, intervened in Libya, intervened in you fucking Uganda, we went to Iraq after ISIS took over the western part of the country, uh, bombed supposedly bombed ISIS in Syria got involved in in Yemen and re-involved in Libya mm -hmm. the Yemen thing is a clusterfuck I, I don't even oh, I don't even really know what's going on um it's it's kind of one of those things that just been pressed blackout Basically, what happened was the Shia, the Sunni government got overthrown by the Shias and it triggered a massive invasion by Saudi Arabia and like a coalition that includes the U.S. Um, and because of that, uh, yeah, that's just kind of it's just this ongoing disaster zone in uh, Yemen at the moment where uh yeah so like half the country is controlled by the shias half the government the country is controlled by saudi arabia and the sunnis and then no it's like it looks like there's like four or five factions and isis has like a control of the third of the country yeah like the, according and, to wikipedia and al-qaeda um yeah there's a cholera outbreak so yeah, it's it's just a cup. It's a fucking just mess. Oh, okay. So there is a big war ba battle going on. Where in Yemen right now? Yeah, there's a huge battle going on. Oh, the Houthi surrendered. Oh, I didn't realize they had surrendered. Oh, I thought it was ongoing. I don't know. It says ongoing. Al Qaeda, Arabian Peninsula. Syria is at least over now. I, I think Syria is over, isn't it? Uh, it's weird because Turkey's like occupying certain areas and like, like it can't be completely won. It's just really weird because they're he's not going to invade the Kurds and then like, uh, Turkey's occupying like the northwest of the country. Aren't they just going to give like implement federalism or something like that and then that'll deal with the Kurds? I don't, I haven't looked into it for, because the thing about it is I don't trust any sources, really. My understanding. So I don't even bother looking into is it. Is the, um, the Kurds and, and the Syrian government have a bit of an understanding that they'll sort things out once the civil war is over. And the Kurds have said that they're willing to accept the government if they get more autonomy. So that's probably what the Syrian government will wind up doing. But, like, as you notice, there are enclaves within the Kurdish areas. They didn't really fight each other that much in the uh, Civil War. Um, 
they they kind of tried to avoid each other in favor of more uh, fighting with uh, the rebels, etc. Let's see here. ISIS is gone, though, aren't they? I don't think they have any territory left. No. Point point one percent was held by ISIS. Yeah, I think it's pretty much over at this point in time. I mean, the neocons still think it's it's ongoing, but the rebels. Uh, are... It's over, but it's not over over in the same way. Like Somalia will never be over over. Right. The rebels still control a fairly large amount of territory, but it well, looks... it's be they're occupied by Turkey now. So, oh, right. As Assad can't attack like the northwest, the green part, from my understanding, because Turkish troops are there protecting the rebels. Right. Although they did manage to, um, let me see, is the Libyan civil war over? Because that was like another big one that was going on. The second Libyan civil war. Um, it's... I've tried numerous times to try to figure out the second Libyan civil war, and I've never successfully been able to figure it out. It's, it's really fucking confusing. <laughs> But uh, it's ongoing. Well, isn't there just like random tribes in control of city? Yeah, it's it's one side's like the liberals and the other side is the like Islamists. I think the isn't liberals... there like neo like Gaddafiists there too? Maybe. Because there's like a neo Gaddafiist like opposition to me. This like big. I remember reading the other day. Okay, House of Representatives. Government of National Accord. Yeah, it's it's a mess. There's like at least there's like four factions at least. And it doesn't like it's just it's it's just a clusterfuck. Um I think the officially recognized government is the government of National Accord, which doesn't control very much of the country. Um, mm -hmm. it's a clusterfuck i forget if um oh yeah egypt's just become a military dictatorship again <laughs> yeah base yeah like they just basically elected mubarak 2.0 <laughs> no they didn't elect him he they coup d'etat the government after the muslim brotherhood um it was because the muslim brotherhood won the election and then he was you know, Muslim brethren hunting the country, so the military just coup d'etat his ass. And then they had a fake election where he won 97% of the vote. That's based. Um, he actually doesn't sound like a bad ruler. Well, Egypt needs a dictatorship. The super Muslim bros are inept at uh, running anything. Or, I don't know, are you sympathetic towards them? To the brotherhood? Yeah. Fuck them. Because aren't they kind of naz bully? No, we need technocratic based military dictatorship in Egypt. How do you feel about Hamas? Um, yeah, I support them. They sound better than Fatah. Isn't Fatah just like the kleptocratic party? In Lebanon? No, in um, uh, in uh, Palestine. Oh, <clears throat> you're thinking well, of Hezbollah. Oh, I support Hezbollah. Fuck Hamas. Although I I wonder if if Hamas is less repressive of Christians than I thought Hezbollah is not very oppressive. No, no, no. I'm talking about Hamas. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't. I don't like taking either sides in it. I just don't. I used to like take Israel lightly. Now I just don't take either side. Mm -hmm. 
It just makes me feel dirty whenever somebody's like, I support Hamas against Israel and imperialism. And it's like, do you know who these people are? They're, they're a um, UN-sponsored death cult. I, I personally am more sympathetic towards the Palestinians just because they're in a state of perpetual limbo. Like, I think it would be more humane if Israel either kicked them out or di or did something else, like, instead of just leaving them in, like, their, um, like, you get what I mean, though, right? Like, they're in limbo permanently, mm -hmm. pretty much. They're never going to be able to be independent, nor are they, like, because if they just kick them out, it would at least be, like, an end to this, this whole thing, but they won't do that. And they won't give them their own stuff. Well, they should have expelled everyone in the middle of 67 and took in those borders just for Israelis. Like, that would have been more humane instead of just this, like... Indefinite, like, taking more and more land in the refugee, refugee camps. Building walls around the water supply. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, it's just because, like, I, I don't like them. I think that they're, like, fucking crazy. But, like, I, I don't really get what they're supposed to do. Like, other than just blow stuff up at this point in time. Like, they don't have any other recourse. I hate the whole... You know what's really interesting to me, though? What? Israeli politics. Mm -hmm. It looks like Baby is going to win again. Yeah, I've done a couple of, I read a whole bunch of books about Israeli politics. It's it's really fascinating how it's changed over time. Well, I don't think Israel can last and I don't think it has anything to do with the Arabs. I think the the extreme orthodox will collapse the country. Because their proportional system gives them so much power and they're having kids in definite they're holding the whole system hostage and they're pushing the part the country further and further to the right but they're not helping the military at all it's it's interesting because the religious parties used to support the um uh used to support the labor party until 67 when well they were really small before that though i, I... yeah they're, they're like basically amish and they're growing exponentially let me look. I think the National Religious Party was fairly large. Uh, let me see here. Mapai. Okay, let me see here. It was the 50s. Argent, if Labor won, would they ally with Joint List? Uh, probably. Or union, as I did. Do you uh, think that that will be, like, really bad? Oh, okay, sorry. If you're asking about books, uh, I guess kind of the quintessential book on Israeli politics is Like Dreamers, um, which is the impact of uh, retaking the um, Jerusalem during the 67 war and how it completely just changed everything. Uh, it's it's long, but I, I really liked it. Uh, there's also a biography of Begin, who I actually might put as one of the greatest leaders. I, I really like Mecham Begin. Uh, he was the first right-wing leader. Yeah, okay, so the National Religious Front got a decent number of votes. And th the thing was that um, the religious Zionists, the religious Israelis actually used to hate the um, hate Israel because they believed only God could rebuild it. And that it was until they took Jerusalem. Yeah, and then they viewed themselves as being redeemed, and then they became just ultra nationalists. This is kind of an an interesting thing, but they used to be that changed a lot over time. Another thing that was interesting. They're a massive dead weight on, on top of the state, and they're growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. Their birth rate is like five times higher than secular Jews. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, let me see. What's the election like? I don't think the right can feasibly really lose uh, the next election. The um... I think that the problem, the thing with the right or the the left is is that labor can't ally with anyone but joint union, and that's insane. So I think that BB's just going to win just because of that. 
Right. And then there's like um the crazy parties. Oh, okay. There's there's a couple. They have to ally with BB has to ally with them. That's the problem. The Jewish. And as time goes on, you'll need to ally them with harder and harder and placate them harder and harder. The Jewish home. <laughs> what? The Jewish home is one of them. Um, the hope. I think there's one called United Torah Judaism. Yes, United Torah Judaism. The um. The Haram. Is that the Russian speakers one? That's also. Oh, is that the? Yeah, the because the Russian speaker guy left because he was head of national defense because he wanted them to invade Gaza again and they didn't. BB didn't. Um, the book's not called Dreamers; it's called Like Dreamers. Um, what was I talking about again? Yeah, so yeah, the um the Jewish party our home is like a far right secularist one. Uh. Yeah, Le yeah, Lakut used to Shaw's Torah observance Sef Sephardim ultra orthodox <laughs> interest. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the issue in in Knesset is they just have um, yeah, it's just going to be a coalition of the. The problem is they're like the shitty far right because, like as you said, if if it was just a far right, that would be fine. But it's it's far right led by people who won't serve in the military, which is like yes, the that's worst. their country. I don't think I think they'll collapse the country because they're pushing them to be more and more aggressive, and they're not doing anything in the military anyway. I mean, if they all joined the military, then that would like probably work a lot better. Yeah, well, that's the. As, say if they didn't, if they weren't pressing for expansion all the time, and Israel like tried to get the Arabs to leave and kept what it had now, maybe gained some in the West Bank or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever, and it just consolidated what it had now, Israel could probably survive with the Arab states if it traded with them and it made the Arabs, because they're smarter than the Arab states, and if it, they traded with them and they made made it so the Arab states would wreck their economy if they invaded, and they still had, you know, superior air force and nukes, they'd be set. But the problem is if they're still doing the settler things and their army declines because of the birth rate of secular Jews, right? then that's making it so all the Arabs will hate them. And they're never consolidating and building ties with any Arab. Okay, so according to this, uh, ultra-Orthodox are 5% of Israel's population, and within the next decade, they're expected to be more than a few. No, they're like 12% right now. Oh, okay, so this is inaccurate. It's actually higher than that. Yeah, they double every 20 years. Because they're basically Amish, too. see here orthodox spectrum i'm sure a lot of them are on the spectrum harati judaism uh due to a virtual absence of interfaith marriage and a high birth rate their numbers are growing rapidly israel they have i think five times the birth rate oh, okay of secular it's, Jews. it's currently 10 percent of the population well, that was a few, oh, 11 few years ago. Okay. No, wait, it's higher than that. Okay, 12% now. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see here. The number of children per woman is 6.2. Holy fuck. This well, Israel has the highest birth of any um, racially white majority country. Mm-hmm. It has a higher birth rate than I think almost all Arab countries, but Iraq. Yeah, I think people don't realize, but most like third world countries have seen their birth rates implode. Um, well, Iran has a birth rate like like all of Europe right now. I think mm -hmm. it's like one point seven or something around there. 
It's too bad if we had have just survived mass immigrate, like not had mass immigration for like 20 more years, it wouldn't have been nearly as bad. Because. Well, it's worse in the United States because the United States incentivizes them having a higher birth rate because of the whole anchor babies. Mm hmm. But yeah, most of the Middle East has the birth rates have collapsed. Um, India, they're falling pretty rapidly. Uh, even in Africa, a lot of the countries there, they're falling. Well, they've halved in Africa. They're still higher than everybody else, but they've halved. Latin America like has... I think most Latin American well, countries are now... Isn't something. half of Latin America in, like, negative now? Uh, yes, I think Bolivia and, like, a couple shitty Central American ones are the only positive ones. But, uh, no, the birth rate has massively declined uh, throughout it. Let's see here. What is the Palestinian birth rate these days? I think it was actually less. Palestinian. I don't know, because Palestine's not a real state. I don't know if it's counted, is it? Ah, uh, it's very confusing. Total fertility rate. Um, two point eight. Oh, it's not that that high as I thought it would be. Oh yeah, because the ultra orthodox are having more babies than them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, Think that the ultra orthodox birth rate is like two and a half times. Yeah, it's much higher. Is China's going back up at all, or China... China's is higher than Thailand? Mm -hmm. Which is hilarious because that mean because they have basically the same GDP per capita. So the single. <laughs> The whole aborting all those children didn't need to happen. No, it, it didn't at all. Most countries just naturally, the birth rate goes down as cost of living increases. I, I think Japan's will probably eventually start recovering once the country loses. Yeah, it. China's is 1.62. You know, it's really... What? The, I think that the real reason for the one-child policy doesn't really have anything to do with the birth rate. It has to do with tax farming births. Right. But, um, yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's a mess there. I think in India, the, the left might actually re-win. And I wonder... My my fantasy is for labor to win in Israel and legalize gay marriage. That is my that is my fantasy for that to happen. Labor to win, ally with joint list, and then give like open borders for Israel and legalize gay marriage. And legalize gay marriage. How awesome would that be? That would be like the ultimate. Fuck you. So yeah, but what? And they just retreat to the United States. They probably would, but it might be worth it. It, it might just be worth it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I like when China trolls the West because, like, they arrested that CEO in um, British Columbia, and China called Canada a white supremacist state. But white people have better, like, white people are more looked up to in China than they are in Canada. No, but it's just a troll. Like, it's it's obviously a troll. Like, China, like, it's just, China does that a lot, actually. Like, if they ever well, have... Well, Russia's an, an, an anti-imperial country that, like, votes for anti-imperialist stuff over and over again. The troll. Yeah. Um, but China's like smart. Well, th the thing with China is China's. Do you like, know how China ended up getting like Hong Kong back? How? 
So when the UN made their anti-imperialist, th they wrote Hong Kong is a imperial, is a China was a victim of imperialism, and Hong Kong was a colony into it and then signed it. So Britain signed it, saying basically that they had to give Hong Kong back to China. Right. Well, China just trolls. Like that's just what they they do um, well they have such a long understanding of what but they're working on such a long time frame have i ever told you what my my okay so here's my theory china's ten thousand year plan to destroy the west okay so the jews are chinese that they sent to kazaria and then from there they went to Europe to corrupt and destroy Europe from within as part of like a two thousand a three thousand year plan to bring down the West and make China the greatest country on earth. But wasn't China already the greatest country in the world? Well, it's it's gonna make them even greater. The um the joke is like what's gonna happen at the end is like in Scream, where like the um like like there's you think it's the like there's the villain and then the other villain steps out behind and like like shlomo's there like doing the merchant hands and then from the back steps out like china and it's like you think china shill for shlomo shlomo shill for china <laughs> something like that the um i the thing i respect about china though is uh that they're a state and they're a state that doesn't that's unapologetic about being a state, and still they'll just do whatever is in the best interest of China, regardless of morality. And they just they don't give two fucks about it. Like when everyone's like saying save the whales or whatever, they just nuke the whales. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of it. Well, China and it China is the one of the main reasons that the Soviets lost the Cold War. Didn't wasn't China pro NATO in the eighties? Yeah, that's what happened. So, China Deng Xiaoping was able to get all the Western investment because it's like, you invest me, I fight Soviet Union, I anti Soviet Union now invest me. So then he was able to do Dingism. And then he stole all the technology from the West. What, what it's literally the... so based. They're remember, the master race. I remember Mao just said, throwing the towel. Mao said to Khrushchev, if you'd like, give us some nukes and we'll nuke the West and we'll take the nuclear retaliation so communism can rule the world. <laughs> He's like, we'll nuke them and then you Wasn't guys... he like, if we lose 400,000, it doesn't matter because we already have a billion? Yeah. I like when Mao tried to sell America. He tried to give America like 10 million Chinese women. Literally create, like, destroying America through Elliot Rogers. Yeah. No, like, he, he did that. And then they thought, like, he's joking. He's like, no, no, I'm not joking. You can take them, get rid of them. <laughs> Is Mao like the most evil person in human history? Uh, I I put him up there. When you put Pol Pot before him, um, does Pol Pot even count? Is he just insane? Um, I I say Mao's so high because Mao is very obviously not insane. He was just really really fucking evil, whereas like some people obviously have like severe mental illness. Okay, yes. Mao Zedong proposed sending 10 million Chinese women to the United States. Uh, I want a Chinese GF. The Chinese GF <laughs> believed that such immigration could kickstart bilateral trade, but could also harm the U.S. with a population explosion similar to China's. We have an excess number of women. Uh, he suggested sending thousands of women but after we're after an afterthought said 10 million drawing laughter. Uh, let's see. So they tried to move on now. Dry <laughs> bringing up the women. Let them go to your place. They will create create disasters. That way you could lessen our burdens. 
continued by doing so we could let them flood your country with disaster and therefore impair your interests in our country we have too many women they give birth to children and our children are too many but Mao said we have so many women in China in our country that don't know how to fight <laughs> you know it's really funny what after the Vietnamese invaded Cambodia and Pol Pot became a a, a, a rebel leader, mm -hmm. he just abandoned communism and just became like a fucking natsock. Who Pol Pot? Pol Pot. He literally was just a communist to get support from China. Wasn't wasn't um, Ho Chi Minh kind of like that too? Wasn't he more of a nationalist and the communism thing was partially just to get money from the Soviet Union? Um, I don't know that much about Ho Chi Minh. The I don't know that much about Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So do you think, what do you think is going to happen with, so I haven't put up the video yet, but just while I have you here, I'm scared of a refugee crisis from Venezuela. Uh, I just hope Bolsonaro invades. Because it's already happening. Like, I think Ecuador is now like 20% Venezuelan or something. It's it's like they're massively just flooding different places. Bolsonaro has immediately, I think, started deporting the Venezuelans. Okay, what's funny about Bolsonaro is how they call his wife... Um, Afro-Brazilian. But she's like pure white. Yeah, but she counts. She's apparently Afro-Brazilian. Which is Can like... you get a picture of her on there so everyone yeah. can see? Mm -hmm. It's hard to find a decent picture of her, but let me see. Bolsonaro is such a chad. Oh, that's kind of low res, but yeah. She's apparently Afro Brazilian. That's kind of one of the few things that, like, Bolsonaro, I think he's on his third or fourth wife. Which he's on his third. His third, which is like. I don't really like, but I guess when you're just that much of a Chad, you just. Well, it's immoral because he's abandoning. I mean, sure, there's some fighting there, but realistically, he's just abandoning the older wives for younger models. Mm -hmm. Brazilian like political parties are really confusing to me because they all are called the Labour Party. Well, I don't. It's like like how click on Bolsonaro. How many different parties is he? Uh, he's also the leader of the Social Liberal Party, which is, like, the biggest fucking troll ever. Do you think that... Do you think that Brazil turned fast? Maybe. They've, they've kind of, like, Bolsonaro... What did he get, 55? He didn't do badly. The, um... Let me bring up some of the quotes from the members of, of like, his, his parla... Like, his cabinet are just so fucking woke. Like one of them is like like a Christian minister. Uh, let me find it. On the first day, he he, he got rid of. Uh, he fired everybody who was doing human rights promotion and like diversity studies in schools. Does human rights just mean gay? Yes, literally, that's all it means. Let me find it. Um... Let me find his. I think it's human rights. Uh, let's see here. 
We want a Brazil without abortion. It is time for the church to tell the nation that we have come. It is time for the church to govern. Uh, when being sworn in, she attacked feminism. If there is a if there was a war between men and women in Brazil, this does not exist. Uh, let's see here. Girls will be princesses, and and boys will be prince. Boys wear blue, and girls wear pray, wear play, pink. Let's see. Is this a fucking like? The if you go on Wikipedia, there's a picture of um, the people protesting him and his son, like like two lesbians kissing in front of them, oh. and they're laughing at him. Mm -hmm. How uh, it was really unsurprising when I found out that he was a mostly Italian, because that explains a lot. Because Italians are just kind of based in general. As, as I've said before, and I'll, I'll say this again, I want the restoration of the Brazilian Empire with the House of Bolsonaro as the Shogun. That is my, <clears throat> that is my fantasy. But, um, yeah, his, um... I know you want the House of Bolsonaro just as the new... No, I, the, the, um... Whatever the Oz wasn't that. Are there uh, legitimate? Pre I don't know that much about Brazil. Are there legitimate pretenders? Yeah, I think so. I th I think monarchism is like somewhat common. Um, when they had an election, I think the monarchists got like twenty percent when they had a referendum. So yeah, they're called the Social Liberal Party, which is the biggest fucking troll ever. Um, they're 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 just they're thinking of moot changing the name to the Republicans, which they probably should. So, are you ever going to make a video where you just talk about Bersalusi? Or, god damn it, Bersalini? Berlusconi? Berlusconi. Um, I just haven't gone. I'm it. sick! Don't make fun of me! I want to do a, um, a top ten Berlusconi quotes. Like, when he called the one guy a capo. Which is, like, the great. <laughs> you should do, like, you know, like... Screw it back or whatever, yeah. where they do like the top tens would be like number ten. You should do that with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see. His vice president is like a member of like an openly fascist party. Uh, let me see. What is his what he is? He, yeah, it's like the new Labour Party. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me see. Uh, he is a member of the. Brazilian Labor Renewal Party, Brazilian Integral. That sounds that sounds fascist. Brazilian Integral, <laughs> some anti <laughs> The Labor Party was um Vargas's party, which uh, was kind of Brazilian fascism. Brazilian Labor Party. We want. I haven't it, looked into integralism that much. Ah, uh, integralism might be the closest to what I kind of believe in. Uh, my only issue is it is that it's it's too multiracial. But other than that, I I like it quite a bit. Um, it's it's a lot more like Christian, specifically Catholic, and it's a lot more in favor of decentralization than other forms of fascism. I like the Falange. And uh, obviously, they're very similar to the Falange. They're probably the um, yeah, they're kind of like a Portuguese version of it. The um, yeah, if you go on Wikipedia, Hutu power is a form of fashion. Islamofascism is like really lame, but it, it, it kind of is. That kind of is like what Hezbollah is. Well, Hezbollah is Islamic fascism. Mm -hmm. Tropical fascism. You know, did you ever do a political history of Iran? No, I don't know enough about it. Dude, Some... It's just so confusing. I, I it's admit there are weird, things... like alliance between communists and Shia clerics. It's their constitution so bizarre. 
And the Shah was like right wing nationalist progressivism. Yeah, or modernism. I want modernism, um, like industrialization of Iran. I I wouldn't really call it left wing though. Yeah, the Resurgence Party, which is like the most fucking base name for a party ever. Um, I kind of like the Shah. I think people are too hard on him. To be honest. What did he do wrong again? Uh, he just, um, he was viewed as being extravagant and he just, he was trying to, um, modernize Iran and he pissed off, uh, the hereditary nobility and the clerics. Yeah, but didn't they get it in the ass after yeah, they got Khomeini them. came in? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it, it did have, like, just massive... Um, production. Um, I guess the other thing that he did do, which is okay, he gave women the right to vote. Okay, that's that's kind of a point. Yeah, but what like was it a was it a system like Thailand, or was it a system where voting didn't matter? Um, I think because he had a fair bit of executive power, he wasn't a constitutional. Uh, near the end of his re his reign, they instituted a one party state. It's like okay. a, it's like a technocratic nationalist party. We need more just one party technocratic. <laughs> this twin is cute. Who are uh, the shot? No, you guys can call me a fucking race mixer or whatever but iranian girls are cute um all three of his wives were hot his first wife who's mostly circassian his second wife who i think is also mostly circassian and his third wife who doesn't look that great in that picture but the Shaw. I don't know. I wonder now Iran's just would you say modern Iran is kind of a kleptocracy? I don't know that much about Iran. Just because <clears throat> when I, I studied it a fair bit in the university and the, the conclusion I just drew was the like religious fundamentalism is just a cover for the kleptocracy to steal the oil money. Is so it's basically like Mexico level? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, let's see. People what do you that. think about um, Iranian law, like intelligence versus Arab intelligence? Um, I think Iranian. What Iran has that Arab countries don't is a very strong sense of national identity. Mm -hmm. Like a very, very strong one. Which I think is is a huge advantage, um, et cetera, compared to some other countries. According to all the IQ stats, Iran has like a, a 82 IQ or so, but every Iranian person I ever met was like, I don't know. They seem much smarter than any Arab. Part of that, that was they sent their that. best. I know that, but... This seemed more together. I don't... You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like I said, it's because they have, like, an actual national identity in a way that a lot of other... Oh, the Shah had the title Light of the Aryans. I know. <laughs> Light of the Aryans. <sighs> Is there a pretender that lives somewhere? And like um I think so I always thought the shot kind of looks like Tony Soprano oh yeah the first uh, Pallavi was an atheist uh, let's see here I'm just trying to find the Pallavi monarchy oh yeah the fucking coup the Shah's coup that, that the CIA did. Remember that? We were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. The CIA directly did it. The Iranians are just puppets. 
It's like, I, I'm pretty sure the Supreme Court asked uh, Pinochet to perform a coup. Like, I'm pretty sure. No, they did. They, the Supreme Court said that the coup was legal. Yeah, because they said the guys... And the, both the Supreme Court and the legislature. If you pull it up, you can look at Chile and just see how bizarre how Allende came to power. Because Allende won with like 33% of the vote. And it was some like weird... No, it wasn't this. The Supreme Court elect uh, uh, made Allende the president. And then Congress said that he wasn't president and authorized the coup. Uh, let's see. The Christian Democrats in are really fucking weird in um in that country in this, Chile? yeah because they're kind of like a third positionist party that but they uh coalition with the no they sometimes coalition with the left they sometimes coalition with the right they're really fucking weird uh let's see here I'm pretty sure, though, that the Supreme Court or someone else had asked them to uh, ask him to perform the coup. Because Allende was just a fucking... No, the Congress did. The legislature did. Yeah. Let's see here. Yep. Anyways, I think that's about, uh... Yeah, you want to wind it down? It's getting hard for me to talk. I cough every time. Yep. So I don't put it on mic. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, good. Uh, thank you so much for coming on at a great, uh, conversation. Well, thank you for having me. I don't know how, like, informative this was. It's just kind of a comfy <laughs> episode, no, I guess. No, I'm talking about a lot of interesting stuff. Anyways, guys. Okay. I will um, buy his book. Yep, buy my book and subscribe to his. I was channel. reading it. I was reading through some of it today, mm -hmm. so I'll do a review. It's just that I haven't read the final version. Right. Okay. Well, talk to you guys.